Hell yeah, let's do it. Ooh, spicy. Alright, 2021, Olivia and I completed our very first year full-time RV. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and the number one question we get is, how much did it all cost? The money, money, money. <laughs> People want to know how much. The good news is we kept track of everything during the year. We put it all into an Excel spreadsheet because I'm not going to have all the numbers memorized. And Unless you're a savant, you yeah. know. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm Rain Man. <laughs> no. uh, a lot of related questions come with how much did your lodging cost, your gas, uh, food, you know, how much fried chicken did you eat? We ate a lot. I love you. Those are all going to vary a lot from person to person. Uh, this is yeah. how we did it. It was, again, our very first year. Uh, another factor that played into that was the fact that we weren't sure if it was also going to be our last year. Yeah. It's fair to say that definitely influenced the speed at which we travel. Yeah, we we were, for the majority of 2021, we were in a new place almost weekly. So we were going really, really fast and that meant we were using quite a bit of gas and we were changing RV parks a lot. Yeah. So we weren't getting any weekly deals. Not as many. Yeah. We did it obviously uh, still, but not as many. And that yeah. does that does play a factor. So And and we work full time. It's yeah. the only thing. Yeah. So our schedules are kind of revolving around as well. This channel, um, we put easily 40 hours a week into making these videos. And then we also have some online side jobs that are bringing in some money as well. So, so that all goes into it and why yeah. For us, it's gonna, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be as transparent as possible. Also, the fact that like, you know, this was uh, we wanted to see it all in our first year, and we went we went hard. Yeah. We went really hard. But we actually did pretty well. Like, I, I'm impressed. Yeah. yeah, we did. And uh, not to go on too long about this, but yeah. we did go in with a budget. Yeah, we did. We weren't going in blind. We had a plan. We wanted to stick to a certain number, and we've organized this all by category. And within each category, we have the annual and monthly breakdown. And that's how we're gonna present it to you guys. Yeah, and we also posted something on Instagram stories and also on our YouTube community tab and asked you guys to send in your questions for us. So we're gonna do our best to make sure that all of those are answered as well. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right, first off, we're gonna start with the most expensive things, the things that cost us the most, and then come down. So the first thing is lodging. Well, what can I say about lodging? So before we started the year, our goal was to have an average nightly rate of 35 to $40 a night. Yeah. And by some miracle, we made it. We <laughs> made it within that window. Our average nightly uh, was between 37 and 40. And um, so our annual total for the year is $13,307. And that comes down to a monthly of around $1,108. And there's a lot, you know, for each of these categories, I want to give you guys a little bit of added information to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at why that ended yeah. up being the case. So a lot of people that have lower lodging costs, they do a lot of boondocking. They'll do a lot of state parks. They'll mooch dock at some friend's houses sometimes. They'll volunteer. They'll do all kinds of things to save money. For us, it being our first year, we wanted to see as much as we could. We didn't want to skimp so much on location and we wanted to be able to, to make sure we were safe and comfortable. Yeah. So we did stay pretty much 95, 96% of the time at an RV park or even an RV resort. But one thing to add to that is because we we're moving so fast, um, a lot of times we're having to book things just a week in advance, sometimes two or three days in advance. So sometimes that did mean, um, you know, Nathan, he does all of our booking for all of the RV parks, but he would let us know, hey, you know, the best deal I could get is a $65 RV park. And sometimes we had to bite the bullet on that. Yeah. Um, but another really great thing that you did that I think other people can learn from 
is when you knew that we were going to Florida, to Miami, you knew that we that would really help us out if for the month that we were in Florida that we yep. could stay at one place. Yeah. And so that made such a significant difference. Yeah. Um, I'd say us. every, it's also for our mental state, every you know five to six months we need a place where we can be in one location for a month yeah. just to have routine and consistency but also it helps cut back on the overall averaging of the expenses for your lodging because a month you get a monthly discount yeah and so that's something too i was very conscious of is whenever we splurged let's say when we splurged in florida keys where it was like 75 a night or in traverse bay in michigan 75 a night for my birthday yeah. those kind of things i knew okay if we're gonna splurge here we're gonna also taper back at other points during the trip and so we kept that in mind and and i want to add one quick thing to that too which is the only rv membership that we had all year was good sam yeah. and that was by choice I, I do a lot of research on like thousand trails and passport america all these other ones and when i get a lot of mixed kind of feedback where it's like oh I, it's nice but you're only limited to these parks and these parks are okay or you have to only go to these parks which means you have to drive to those places it's like i didn't want to sacrifice doing what we wanted to do. Yeah. It was like, we, if we wanna see this place or, or go to this park that's closer to it, we're gonna go there. Cause the moment you invest hundreds of dollars within let's just say thousand trails, then you feel obligated to get your money worth. So it's no longer about, you know, where do we wanna go? It's where can we go now? If there's one message actually, that's probably the most important message of this video. It's that as an RVer, it, the most important thing is to be clear on what you, you want. want to get out of RVing. Totally. And to know in your heart that that's what you're all about. Like we love being outdoors in nature and going to national parks and- Eating fried chicken. And yeah, like splurging on nice meals in certain big cities. Just look at that Thousand Island just dripping off the side. <laughs> but not really spending the majority of our time in big cities. Yeah. And so we, knowing those things, th that kind of dictates what RV memberships actually make sense for you and the style of travel you're gonna most likely you know, end up doing. So, yeah. all right, that's lodging. Oh, and I wanna take a quick moment to thank our Patreons. This is, we just launched it recently and, and the response has been incredible. Like, I just, I'm blown away by anybody who's willing to give us $1 and support us on our journey. You know, we're gonna invest it into our equipment and to this RV lifestyle and, and bringing you the best videos we can and it means a lot, so thanks again. All right, now moving on to category number two. Food. Food. We split this into really two main parts, which is our groceries for eating in, and then our eating out and kind of, you know, restaurant life. For the year on groceries, we spent around $5,100. I'm not surprised. Uh, our initial goal was around to average around 400 a month, and we fell around $425 a month. But yes. we cook the majority of our meals in, yeah. so that's something that we've been doing for a few years now. Not only just because we know what's going into our food, us making it, but we do save money that way, and we eat healthier that way. And to go along with that, we also got a Costco membership, which is $127 a year. So when we had that a chance, helped. we always went to Costco. It's just, you can buy in bulk and you get better, better deals. Um, eating out, about $4,000 for the year. So we didn't hold back, per se, I think. Uh, we didn't eat out just to eat out for the most part. We'd always eat out when it entailed trying something that was like a local dish or something special like a lobster roll, Nashville hot chicken. Key lime pie. Key lime pie. Beers and drinks out so we could maybe meet somebody. Yeah. We've learned to going to a bar and sitting at the bar and yeah. talking to the bartender has been a great way for us to kind of get to know the yeah, area. We, they let us know what to do and then sometimes we have people that sit next to us and. We yeah. make friends that way. That's Another thing that we didn't note about this eating out budget, this includes coffees. One of the questions, we got this a few times, was how much did you guys spend on coffee? I don't wanna talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> no, because no, we, I mean, coffee for us, getting it out is an experience. We love going to a new cafe, yeah. uh, and we also just love that it's usually pretty damn good coffee than what we would just make at home. So, um, if there's one thing we splurge on more than the average Joe, it's coffee. But, <laughs> but quick thing is we're not getting lattes. We're not getting five and six dollar lattes. We're just getting the drip coffee, coffee which is like yeah. two dollars, two dollars fifty cents. Yeah. So yeah, if we're if we're in the south and we want to have some southern barbecue, we're not holding back. We're gonna have that. 
and follow that up with a goo goo cluster. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, all right. So we had some some technical difficulties. Uh, so we took the opportunity to grab a coffee. Cheers. <sighs> the, the camera just died on us. I don't know what happened. But anyways, uh, Olivia was gonna say next category, which is truck and RV costs, gas and fuel. $6,509 for the year. That brought us to $542 for the month. And a lot of that was, like we said, we drove a lot. We drove, I think, around 26,000 miles last year. And we were only getting about eight to nine miles per gallon. Yeah. Um, we did a lot of driving, obviously, also, like a ton of driving without the trailer, you know, yeah. uh, hooked to the back. Like we'd, we'd separate and then we'd go drive an hour to a national park or an hour and a half to a state park or whatever, so. Yeah, but still basically 540 bucks a month yeah, to be able to do a big loop around the United States. I was actually, I was happy with that. And we're originally from California, so pretty much any other state has is better, a lot better on gas. So that, that also helped average, average out our numbers. <laughs> yeah, moving on to tolls. Tolls we spent $350 for the year. This was way higher than I anticipated. Yeah, which was $30 for the month. And a big part of that was Florida. We were in Florida a lot, so we were ringing those up like crazy, but we got screwed by Illinois. <laughs> Illinois, I'm not happy with you. Um, long story short, we had like a $4 toll. And because we're on the road, and we obviously aren't getting our mail quickly, $4 toll costs us over $100 because yeah. we didn't respond within seven days. So they sent us a fat fee well, in the mail. Adding up. Just any other RVers, if you're going through Illinois watch and out. you don't have a pass, watch out. Do you want to do parking? Yeah, parking was $300 for the year, which averaged out to $25 uh, per month. And that's really just, you know, whenever we're in cities and stuff and you got to pay for parking, you got to put those quarters in. On average, you know, uh, we, we it added up because there's sometimes we pay a couple dollars a day, but over yeah. over 365 days, $300 is our total. State park entry fees we also included in parking. I think we went to like four or five state parks. Yeah, and yeah. It was like 20 bucks each time. It adds up. Moving on, car insurance. So this is car insurance and RV insurance. Both are going to vary depending on your car, the state. There, there's so many different factors. We spent $650 for the year and $54 per month. And then on RV insurance, we spent $435 for the year, $36. And for, for a car, oh yeah, I was like. Nationwide is on your side. Uh, AAA roadside assistance, 60 bucks for the year. It's only $5 a month. Um, we did early on. We use that. A couple, once or twice? We use it three In times. Utah for sure, where we like, there was a stretch of like 75 miles where there were gas stations. And we realized already 20, 30 miles in, and we were cutting it really close. We decided to go for it, long story short. We, yeah, we, we didn't, didn't make, make it. it. We didn't make it. <laughs> but they came and they brought us like five gallons of gas, and we were fine. Yeah. And we were then, only like a few miles away from the gas station. Yeah, but. and the second time it worked, and thank God, was we were in Rhode Island, and I was cleaning the car. I had the keys on the door, and when I went to shut the door, the Escalade locked. Called them within 10 minutes. Yeah, he they did. got a local. Um, uh, towing dude, whatever, <laughs> mechanic, dude, whatever, shows up and he just shoves his thing in and yeah. then I unlocked. got to see it in action, which also makes me think if I had to do it myself, I could now. Yeah, because it was and it was here. free. Yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah. included well, at the AAA. Included, yes. Car maintenance and repairs, $2,950 for the year. This, if we had to kind of describe our most unexpected expense, uh, we had to get a new window, new water pump, new brakes, rotors and calibers, new bearings. And ironically, we'll follow that up with our, our RV maintenance and repairs were only $1,000 for the year. And that was an expense that was probably under budget. We anticipated to have some, some a couple things go wrong or a couple things need to be fixed. We got lucky. We got so lucky. We have some friends that we met in Austin, Texas. They spent the majority of their first year in and out of the shop with and their RV. And they bought theirs new. Yeah, so again, even though it was under warranty, um, we just, we felt we felt for them because they kept having to go yeah. back and forth and getting things fixed. And then that really dictated their plans. We were told that a lot of times if you can buy a used RV that's only a couple years, you know, a couple years old that had a really good first owner, sometimes that first owner ends up, ends up taking, kind of fixing all the little 
things that go wrong yeah. the first couple years. The bits and bobs. And so I think that kind of was our case. So. Yeah, and that actually leads into the next case, which is RV parts and accessories. Again, we got pretty lucky because the previous owner, not only did they make sure that everything was, you know, I was gonna say smooth sailing, yeah, but they also threw in a lot of their RV accessories for us. Yeah. So they were moving to Canada, so they pretty much couldn't hold on to anything. So they just said, yeah. we'll throw all, all the gear and stuff in. For the RV parts and accessories, we spent $1,500 for the year, which came out to $125 for the month. We bought a brand new generator. Generator is the bulk of that. The generator was a thousand dollars alone. And then we had a couple other smaller expenses like propane, which was $60 for the year. We, so it averages out to five bucks a month. The reason our propane was also so low is we bought an electric kettle and uh, electric heaters during winter. So yeah. we really would just use the electricity that RV parks provided. Thank you, Jesus. It has been freezing in here. Uno, dos, tres. Woo! Voila! Moving on to laundry. Laundry costs us about $120 for the year, which averages about to $10 uh, a month. We would go and do our laundry, I'd say, every like 10 days to t 14 days or so. And all our, I'd say, most of our RV parks. They all, all had yeah. laundry, which was great. Uh, but per per load, you're looking at like four or five dollars. That's what it was like every single RV park. Yeah, and I know a lot of the bigger rigs out there have their own washer dryer on board. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry. About we don't have to worry about the weight. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. that's true. <laughs> so, all right, moving on. Next category, I'll have Olivia start us off with entertainment play yay fun <laughs> activities <Yeah. laughs> so many activities this is how we do it ah! so uh for entertainment we spent three thousand dollars for the year and that was about 250 dollars a month um i'll let you tell them some of the fun things we did we did a hemingway tour in like the keys for example we did a shark valley tram tour we did the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in Orlando, <laughs> airboat tour, Hot Springs, Goga in Austin, World War II Museum in New Orleans. Don't skip that, that's amazing. Yeah. And another thing we, Olivia and I love to do is we're huge movie buffs. So yeah. we go to the movies more than the average person. Side we, I love popcorn, I can't, uh, I gotta get popcorn every time. Side note. If you've been watching our videos and you know about all the freaking movie clips and movie references in our videos, that is Nathan. That is, that's not Nathan even like trying to think hard. He just, he'll be editing and he knows the perfect clip. So entertainment, about 3,000 for the year. And I don't know why we put Netflix in there. Well, we also have a Netflix yeah. account, so we're paying $168. So some people ask us whether we use our TV in our trailer, and the answer is no, we don't. We ne we've literally never <laughs> used it. We just yeah. watch movies or TV shows off of our laptops in bed, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. uh, moving on to our next category, which is work, all work-related expenses, which we've got quite a bit. So you wanna start us yeah. off? Yeah, so it's funny. So we spent $3,000 on entertainment, but we also spent $3,000 for the year on video gear, which was $250 for the month. So we got a new lens this year that we needed, that wide lens. Anytime you've seen Red National Parks, and it's just a really nice wide shot. That was 1100 bucks. Uh, we got a new drone. We invested in Final Cut Pro new this software. year. We're always having to buy hard drives and SSD drives. Um, I'd say that adds up the most, probably is just because, yeah, we fill up our hard drives and SSD like drives. Like crazy. Because yeah. we, we film everything in 4K, so we won't get anything more to that, but it takes up a lot of space, and so we're always having to invest in new gear. And then we got a few other things like tripod headphones, etc. And another thing I want to share with you guys that won't apply to pretty much anybody who doesn't do video is that we do have quite a bit of monthly subscriptions that uh, we pair with our work. Yeah. So I'll give you some examples. Canva is for graphic design. We pay $15 a month for that. Epidemic Sounds is for our music. We pay $12 a month. Storyblocks uh, is for certain drone shots that we need for that are taken in national parks because we're not allowed to take drone shots there. Yeah, we get that question a lot. But yeah, where do you, how do you, how were you allowed to drone? Uh, we weren't. We paid to have we it in our video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, TubeBuddy, uh, we pay nine dollars a month for, and that's for for YouTube stuff. And then Motion Array, uh, we've recently started paying for, which is thirty dollars a month, which is for Final Cut Pro effects and plugins. Yeah. So that all adds up to six hundred and forty-two dollars for the year. 
$54 per month. And we also have some other subscriptions that are billed annually. Bluehost is $154 a year and Elementor is $49 a year. Those are for our websites. We also paid it for a national park annual pass, $80 for the year. And this is probably the thing that has saved us so much money. Yeah. Olivia did the math on it. How much would we would have we spent? We would have like spent $500 on national parks this year if we didn't have that pass and we paid 80 for it. So, so if you're going to national parks, it's worth it. 100%, we're actually gonna get, we haven't gotten another one for 2022, but that's one of the first things we're gonna buy this year is another national park pass. Yeah. Um, and we also pay for Road Trippers plus another really good app for uh, creating your itineraries on the road. I love it. If you've Me seen too. us on our maps and certain some videos, we use road trippers and that's $24 for the year. So moving on now to our internet and cell. Um, you, want, you want to take over? Yeah, I'll do this one. So uh, for our cell service, we spent $1,080 uh, for the year that came out to 90 for the month and that's just through AT&T. We are given uh, 30 gigs each of hot spotable data and there's been a, quite a few times that we've used that and really needed it. Um, and then for our internet hotspot, um, we just spent 80 bucks for the year, which came out to $7 for the month. Um, that's because we spent $80 on a Wi-Fi extender, and that is just extending this, uh, the um, Wi-Fi service that you already currently are connected to. So because we were staying in RV parks, and once we knew for sure, okay, we're sticking with RV parks this year, we're not really boondocking at all, we knew that the extender could do the job. And I wanna expand on the internet cell phone thing because we get a lot of questions about this. And so what we chose for the year was basically to use our phone hotspots for internet when we when an RV park didn't provide Wi-Fi, let's say. That being said, we got the extender to improve their signal and sometimes it still wasn't very good. That's why we also end up going to like Starbucks's a lot to use their Wi-Fi because it's a reliable Wi-Fi for work. This is an area that we still need to improve on in my opinion yeah. because it, to be honest, there was a lot of frustration this year in terms of like not being able to upload a video. I wasn't able to get on a work call with a client because the, the, the service was so bad sometimes. Yeah. We're still working on it. Uh, I wouldn't say that our way is the best way, actually. We, we, but I know, I know that there's, we've met people on the road that have a great setup, but mm. their setup is very expensive. Yeah. And so we haven't found a kind of a happy medium that does not gonna cost us an arm or leg. We were always staying in areas that did have a Starbucks nearby, so that really did help us. I will say, if say this round, this next round, when we tour the United States for a second time, if we plan on doing much more boondocking or being out in remote places where we won't have access, we must invest in something better. But for now, it actually, it might have actually saved us money this year. Oh, it did, it did. So yeah. that we could do it, and I'm happy with that, but There was some right. scrambling at times yeah. to get. So for health and wellness last year, we spent 600 bucks for the year and $50 for the month. Yeah. And lastly, I put this in <laughs> its extras category because we did have a few splurges. I mean, it's, yeah. it's expected. Uh, Olivia got a nice, a beautiful Pendleton jacket in Jackson, Wyoming. Uh, I bought Olivia a, a really cool hat in Austin for her Ooh. birthday. Ooh. I bought myself a longboard in, in Miami. Uh, we got we upgraded our pickleball rackets. We got some new pickleball rackets. So those things do add up. I didn't include other expenses, obviously that are very personal, like Christmas gifts and all that. Yeah. But what just as a whole, for the grand total of the year, we spent forty five thousand. $405, which averages out to $3,784 a month. So where does that lead us as far as what was our expectation? My ultimate goal was to actually be more between the 3,000 to 3,500 range. Uh, I'm not surprised we went over. Again, it was our first year. We didn't hold back in some instances because we weren't sure if we were gonna continue RVing. And RV parks, I will say during the second the, the tail end of the second half of the year were more expensive than I thought. The ones around Yellowstone and Jackson, even Idaho, they were more expensive than I anticipated. That being said, we made it work. And I know for a fact though, this is what's so cool about RVing is I think most RVers, their first time, their first year, spend more than all the other years because they're yeah. still figuring things We've out. We've seen a pattern of that, yeah. more so people are saying. I, I'm, almost, I'm with certainty, I know we'll spend less going into next year, uh, far less. We'll also be traveling slower, 
Now we still have a few more questions to answer, so the video is not quite over yet. One of them being is, when we get this one a lot, which is how did we make money while traveling? So I actually have an online fitness group where most of my clients are based out of Australia. So I run that and I also have some consulting calls that kind of go along with that on the side. And Olivia is a marketing consultant. So we've answered this a lot through comments, but now it's officially answered on camera, on YouTube. Uh, but but we're, we're, we're trying to minimize those responsibilities yeah. as much as we can because we do want to do this full time. We yes. love doing this full time. And I have been tapering back like my clientele in the second half of this year to be able to do more of this. Yeah. So, oh, what was our biggest unexpected cost? Like I mentioned earlier, I would say it's definitely our truck repairs. And there are a few things I do want to touch on really fast before we wrap it up. And kind of like a quick fire, quick tips. Uh, always have an emergency fund. We definitely had an emergency fund, so don't be living on the edge. That's that's not a fun place to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing is we don't want to put any parameters on anybody as far as what's possible with RV living. You can totally RV full time on two thousand dollars a month. Uh, a month. If you're traveling slower, if you're doing like six months in one place, you can obviously spend a lot less money. Totally. You can also spend upwards of five or six thousand if you're balling and retired and you have all this excess money and you want to stay at the fanciest <laughs> RV resorts, you can also do that. Uh, we're, you know, we're originally from California, so we spent way less than we would have if we had stayed in California, just to give some of you an idea of how expensive California is. Yeah. This was still a much more affordable lifestyle and in so many ways richer and more enjoyable just seeing the places yeah. and the exploration. That's amazing. Anyway, um, what else? Lodging again varies so much based off of like a big tip on how to save money is to do the weekly rates. If you can do a weekly rate in one place, they give you a discount. And if you can do the monthly rate, you're going to get an even greater discount. We're looking to do more of that going into 2022. Yeah. Um, anything else you can think of off the top of your head? Oh, this is funny. Uh, so some, the perception of RV life is, is so different from each person. And there's some people that think like, you're gonna save so much money RVing. And there's some people that are in another camp that are like RV, the money you spend RVing just gets flushed down the toilet. <laughs> and I think it's like, it's they're both kind of true. Like you can end up having all these crazy repairs that we've we definitely heard stories of yeah. that. And then you have people that are just, you know, if you can fix a lot of things yourself, like DIY and stuff, um, that's gonna save you a lot of money too. So it falls on a spectrum as always. Oh, another thing that we didn't really realize, I think till later in the year, is that I didn't know that as starting from like the end of 2019 onwards, that the a lot of RV parks had up their rates. We didn't know any better because we started then. So I think if you guys are wondering why our average nightly you know, cost for lodging was higher than expected, that also might have played a factor. We didn't really know any better because we didn't know what they were paying years prior yeah. or charging years prior. But I guess it's gone up and, and there's been an outpour of more RVers in the last couple of years. All right, that's a wrap. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys and sort of a case study of RV newbies first year on the road. Definitely, we learned a lot from it. We we have a lot to take away to do 2022 even better. better. And uh, yeah, any like Olivia mentioned, just throw our, your questions at us. We'll answer them the best we can. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. <laughs>